Hey guys, Steve Welch here, Beam and Toyota in downtown Nashville. Of course, uh, you can see it behind me here. I'm um, just kind of walking through uh, uh, the lot here. Figured I'd uh, kind of talk to you about some things that uh, people always ask us about. And um, one of the biggest questions that we've been getting lately is, uh, you know, when you know, a, a lot of my friends, let's put it this way, uh, will be asking about, well, what's this new thing about buying a car online? Um, they, they kind of want to, I mean, obviously it's new, so you're, uh, you're intrigued by it. I mean, you go to Amazon, you buy all your Amazon stuff online. You got, uh, uh, obviously a lot of options when it comes to buying things online. So, um, why shouldn't I buy a car online? Why should I go to a dealership? Which is obviously like, like I said, where I work here at a dealership. Um, now I will say these are all my opinions, of course. Um, and I am biased because, uh, I have seen and heard of people with horror stories about buying a car online. So what I'm gonna go through here is I'm gonna go through, through the seven reasons that you should not buy a car online, all right? So the first one is no salesperson. Um, and you know a lot of people might be, well, that's a good thing. I don't like working with salespeople. Um, the salesperson's not just there to sell you a car and, and to be realistic nowadays, it's really not even as much selling as it is helping you buy. Um, if you consider the technology just in a vehicle, I mean, you've got computers, you've got dozens of computers in these cars. Now you've got, uh, you know, all the, the smart stop technology, your safety sense, your, you know, no matter what brand you're looking at you have technology in these cars that number one, somebody that doesn't work for the brand probably isn't gonna know that well. Um, but number two, somebody at a call center online that's going, uh, we'll send you your car to your house, they're not gonna know anything about it. So basically, maybe you read your owner's manual if it comes with it and you know try to figure out exactly uh, it, you know, how, what your question is and how to, uh, how to answer it. So. Um, that being said, I'm just going to kind of show us around here a little bit. Um, you can see this is just part of what I've got in, in inventory. So, and a 4Runner is different from a Sienna, which is different from a RAV4, which is different from a Highlander. Uh, the technology, they're different. The way they drive is different. The things that uh, they they do are different. You know, what's the tow rating on a 4Runner? Ask a guy at online if they know what that is. The answer is they don't. It's 5,000 pounds, by the way. Um, so, just just, you know you're not going to get that answer from somebody that's not a salesperson. You're not going to get, um, you know, let, let's say that you buy, and, and obviously these are new cars. I'm talking pr about used cars, of course, when you're talking about, uh, um, what you buy online, of course. Um, but let's say that you, uh, um, you have a, a question about your car or you have a issue and, and that's the worst. You have an issue with your car. You're gonna call, you're gonna sit on hold with somebody, you're gonna be sitting there for a minute or two or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Maybe they'll call you back sometime and you're gonna ask them a question about a car and they're gonna say, I don't know. Or they're gonna Google it. Well, you could do that. Uh, maybe they get you an answer, maybe they don't. But regardless, having a salesperson is valuable and uh, I, I like to make myself very valuable as you can tell from my YouTube channel here. But um, Having a salesperson is a very, very valuable thing, and uh, it's definitely one of the biggest pros about buying from a dealership. And I always tell people, buy from a uh, a dealership that has commission salespeople. And a lot of people go, well, I don't want to pay commission. Why not? That guy's working harder for you than anybody else. Uh, if you got a commission salesperson, that that person, I don't care what you're buying, if you go and buy furniture, and you have a commission salesperson that's buying that you're buying the furniture from, don't you think they're going to be a whole lot better than somebody at a big box store that's going, here's your box, have a nice day? They're going to answer your questions. They're going to do things uh, a little bit different. So it, it's it's definitely great to have a, a salesperson that you can really rely on to number one know their stuff and number two to take care of you before, during, and after the sale because most of us. We like to stay at the same dealership. I've been here four years. Um, and the longer I stay here, the more people come back to me, the more people send their friends. That's very important to me. I'm going to treat you right because of that. So, um, like I said, number one is that the reason you don't buy online is there is no salesperson. Um, number two, and, and this is a rule, never buy a car from a place that doesn't have a service center. 
So now I'm not talking about these little spots. I have a little garage door that opens up and that's where they hide the car so that they can uh, uh, put a couple body panels on them or something like that. I'm talking about if it doesn't have a service center, and this is something I learned from a guy named Casey Nix, so definitely I want to give him a shout out, Casey Nix. Um, but if it doesn't have a service center, what are they doing to the cars? You know, they go to the auction, they buy a car, they put it on their lot. You can't change the oil if you don't have a service center. So you're not even getting the most basic of an inspection without a service center. I mean, what are you gonna do? You paying somebody to come in, look around the car and go, yup, it's good. I mean, you gotta have a service center to be able to properly look over a vehicle, lift it up, take the tires off of it, have the hood open, know what you're looking at. I mean, you know, have, have diagnostic tools that cost thousands upon thousands of dollars that you can hook up to the uh, to the uh, the car and try to figure out exactly what's wrong with the car um, if there was an issue. I mean, you know, anybody can go, oh, check engine lights on. Now figure out why it's on and how to fix it. Figure out if it was an issue. Was it flooded? Is there a um, a underlying problem with the car. Maybe that's why the last person got rid of it. You don't know why the last person got rid of that car. Um, at a dealership, a lot of times we'll know because we sold it. We sold the last car to the last person. And uh, what what are they coming back for? Oh, well, we got these new 19 and 20 RAV4s out. They bought a 17. They just traded in the 17 for this 19 because why? They really like the new body style. I know why they traded that car in. And if I don't, I can talk to the salesperson that traded for it and I can say, hey, hey, you know, why, why did this customer trade in the car? Do you know about it? What was the issue? Oh, it didn't have enough room for them. It, they were downsizing. Whatever reason, I can find out what it is. They, you know what? I hated that car because whatever. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that too, because if they didn't like the car, maybe for the same reason you won't like it and I don't want you upset. So um, I want you to, you know, be very happy with the car and I want you to, uh, to love your car and like I said come back to me um, and there's reasons people don't fit in cars I understand that so um, but yeah number two and that like I said that is a rule never buy from a spot that does not have a service center all right so number three and it comes to do with this right here this is a Carfax most people have seen a Carfax um, this particular one shows damage reported so uh, this is one that I just pulled on one today. It shows a leased vehicle, and I mean, you'll find stuff like that on on vehicles that you're um, you'll find stuff like that on vehicles that you're looking at. Um, and sometimes damage reported. It, it didn't say it was from an accident. Like the, cust the customer told me, they backed into a mailbox and they had it got it, they got it fixed at a uh, at our body shop. And okay, so it was damage reported. I understand, but here's the thing: I know why this damage was here. If I bought this car at auction, I don't know why the damage was there. Did a tree fall on the car and somebody rebuilt it from the roof? Um, I've seen cars spliced together. I've heard stories of these where frames have been welded, things like that. You don't know what you're getting. So the main, this is the third part of the rule is that not everything goes on this Carfax. Um, so you could think about it and go, okay, well, Carfax says no wrecks, no damage. It's good, right? Not necessarily. Um, like I said, a lot of people are, you know, fairly decent mechanics. You know, they they fix their own cars, they do their own uh, their own maintenance. They're, uh, you know, they they can take care of a lot of stuff. Me personally, I actually had wrecked a car before and just trying because I was broke. I was just trying to get the car to where I could drive it again. I re-welded. I actually cut one of the structural panels and re-welded it together just so that. I could keep driving the car. And I ended up junking the car after you know it, it served its purpose. But the thing is, that went on the car flat, Carfax. That was a clean Carfax. There was no way to know that damage was there unless you knew what you were looking at. Um, I just wasn't going to sell it to somebody. I, I used it for myself. So, um, but yeah, definitely realize that not everything goes on the Carfax. Um, so now, a lot of times, now you got to think about this too. So how many people had an opportunity to buy that car all right so let's say like this one this is a, a leased vehicle that a customer was turning in so what happens with the leased vehicle is that you've got an auction that these people go to and you've got a leased vehicle so now 
actually, let me back up a little bit. First thing that happens with the lease vehicle is usually the manufacturer will give the dealership that takes it in first dibs at buying it. So, all right, Mr. Toyota dealer, Mr. Honda dealer, Chevy dealer, you now have this off leased vehicle that you know the story on and a customer that's your customer and you can buy this car for X number of dollars. Now, keep in mind, a car that's your brand. So when I have a Toyota, I can certify it. Um, I, and keep in mind, I've got uh, Mr. Beeman, obviously, has four other dealerships. So it's not just Toyotas that you know we can certify. We could send stuff to other stores, things like that. Um, but uh, so if you have a car that you can certify, a car that goes along with the brand that you sell, that man, that that people are coming for that. So if somebody says, hey, you know what? These new Corollas are really nice. I can't quite afford a new one. And I say, well, let me show you a 17 that's an off lease vehicle that I just got in. And, and you know, it's been great. This thing's got 30,000 miles on it. Well, now I've got a car that I can go back on for a customer that did, this one didn't quite fit for him. So knowing that, why would I get rid of one? So think about that. Now, there is a reason that um, some dealerships will. Let's say that I had 20 Corollas in stock and I just didn't have any room to park it, well, maybe at that point, there'd be a, a time to say, all right, well, I don't need another one, so I'm not gonna do the service on it, I'm not gonna spend the money on it, I'll send that one to auction. It happens. Um, so it's it's something that could happen and, and does happen a lot, you know, just depending on size of lots that people have and how much room they have to store the vehicles. And um, if they have a service center, which like I said, number two, always buy from a place with a service center. But if they have that service center, then um, maybe they just don't have time to, to get it because they got so many waiting on uh, being certified or, or whatever they're doing. So um, that being said, so definitely um, you, you've got, you know, you could definitely let that car go to uh, go to auction. But here's the thing. Usually they'll give other Toyota dealerships or other Honda dealerships the opportunity to bid on the same car. So first off, you had the first dealership say, I don't want it. Second dealership now said, I don't want it because we're trying to figure out how it gets to the to the online, all right? Third dealership, you know, all right, so now you're at auction, right? So auction, there's auction fees, things like that that are incurred, right? So you've got all of these people that are bidding on this car, right? And nobody else wanted it, which is just, you know, mind boggling, think about it that way. But, and don't get me wrong, we'll have auction cars and stuff like that, but, um, we're going to send them through our service department, make sure that they're everything that we want them to be, of course. Um, but you've got these places with no service center bidding on cars that went through several abilities to buy where somebody didn't have to bid on it. They could have just bought it and, and nobody bought it. So definitely that's, you know, that's a, that's your number four. So how many places said no to the car? That's the number four number reason not to buy your car online because you don't you don't know why it happened that way you don't know if they they know that there was a wreck on it or something like that and um not all places will uh will tell you about that so now number five and, and this is you know some people will call this a pro of buying online but there, there's no other option to consider um so a lot of people will say well yeah they can't upsell you well, they can't downsell you either. So here, here's the thing. So if you're looking at that car and you find out that the payment's 450 a month and you can't go over 350, well, now you're settling for something. Well, I might have something that could work perfectly for you. And if that's the case, then great. Sorry, we got a cop behind us here. Of course, we're uh, ambulance. Um, so if, uh, if you want a car, um, and, and well, let's say this, let's say that you order your car online, you sit in it and you go, hey, it's okay. You know, it'll work. Well, you know, if you're on my used car lot and you get to um, where you're sitting in a car, you can, you can go, you know what? Let, let me look at the blue one that's right beside it. Let me look at the white one. Let me look at, instead of the, the Camry, let me look at the Taurus. Let me look at the, the Accord, you know, because most times I'm going to have some options on my use side and, and maybe, maybe the Accord seat feels better to you than the Camry seat. Not likely, but maybe it does. But the thing is, is you can't experience that unless you know, um, some options. So spend some time. Don't, 
just click and have some car that might be okay for now show up and kick yourself for doing it so um so definitely so uh, no other options to consider and uh, usually i tell people it's about probably in my experience about 60 70 percent of the time somebody comes in hey i'm looking at this stock number they come in they look at a particular stock number on a car take them right to it and they're going man you see this one sitting right beside it I'd really like that color. I didn't like that color online, but now that I've seen it in person, I really like that color. You wouldn't have known that otherwise until you see it on the road and go, oh, I wonder what that color is called. Well, it's the one you didn't think you liked. So um, there's, there's other reasons to go. Colors can look different on TV. Colors can look different on computer screens too. So um, there, most of the time you'll, you'll find out that there are a lot of times, let's put it that way, that people will buy something other than what they came for. Um, number six is that Contrary to popular belief, it's not all about price. Um, and what I mean by it's not all about price is that I can price two cars that have the same year, the same make, the same model, the same equipment right next to each other, and one one's worth a whole lot more. And you're like, well, how can that be? Well, because the one that was on the right had a wreck on it, and it had major damage, and it was repaired. The one on the left, you know what? It's a higher price. didn't have a wreck. Or the one on the right was from a northern area and it had a, you know, a lot of rust underneath it. The one that was on the left was from, you know, Tennessee or Georgia or something like that. And it was not, uh, it was not, uh, you know, in snow for any period of time. So, um, definitely that's, that's something to consider is where a car's from and that. So if you're just, you know, like like some of these people and and i'm not i'm not if this, if this is you then i mean this has been me too where you go all right here's what i want and sort the price from the highest or from the lowest to the highest and then you go okay this one looks good and you click on the lowest price you probably did the wrong thing and you know that's part of what i'm saying here is that just because it's the lowest price, it does not mean it's the best car. You might spend $500 more and get a much better car, even though on paper they look identical. And that's what we're talking about. Online, they look identical. Same color, same make, same trim, same everything. They are different cars. The only time that those two cars were ever identical is when they rolled off the factory line. Um, so if you're looking at new cars, I don't mean shop online for new cars when you're when you're doing that because um, new cars you know it, as long as the trim level is the same the make the model and, and what's on it's the same yeah it's the same car as soon as they drive off the lot they're different cars they're used differently they're drove differently they're maintained differently they're different cars even though they look the same on paper so definitely so number six is not about price and number seven is that extended test drive so realistically they say that your average you know your average person knows within just just a couple minutes whether or not the car that they're test driving is the right car for them they know that really fast you get it on the highway you feel it you you know you, you hit your cruise control you feel how that car feels you you know if it's right for you or not so these extended oh don't just take a 10 minute dealership test drive now i'll tell you normally my test drives are about 20 minutes in 20 minutes you know whether or not that that car is right for you um so i'm going to tell you that uh, you definitely know that so um now here's some of the horror stories i've heard about people that say that they took these little uh you know they tried to take the car back all right well when the, you bring the car back they're going well you got too many miles on it you own it well what do you mean i got too many miles on it well we only allow you 50 miles to test drive it okay well 50 miles i mean that could be to work at home you get one day with the car to see if you like it and you can't even make it to work before your miles are up. And I've heard of some of them are 150 miles. Okay, two or three days, maybe. It, it's not, and, and you're in traffic, you're, you know, you're, you're driving a car that you're scared about because you don't know if you want it. Um, it, it just, it just, just trust me on this. It's, it's definitely that, that extended test drive really stinks. Um, and, um, something else that I've heard people say is that they'll bring a car back and it, you know, it had a little dent, a little ding, a little scratch on there. And now all of a sudden that dealership that they brought it back to is trying to charge them for damage that was already there. And they're saying, we'll prove that it wasn't. Well, how do you prove a negative? You can't prove a negative. So, um, it just, 
realize that going to a dealership is always going to be better than buying online. And like I said, this is all my opinion, um, but it's it's on uh, it's with good reason that I bring it up. So um, I'll go to go over these real quick again, just to kind of synopsize for you. Um, reasons not to buy online: number one is no salesperson, like we talked about. Number two is never buy from a place that does not have a service center. Uh, there's no way to service the car. Um, number three is that not everything goes on your car fax. Um, number four is that, you know, how many places have said no to the car? Um, how many times did it have the opportunity to be bought before it got to where those people were able to buy it? Um, um, number five is that there's no other options to consider. So um, you don't have that, uh, that alternative for yourself to be able to say, is this a better option for me? Um, maybe it's a better car, maybe it's identical, um, but you don't have that. So, and then number six is not all about price. Um, like we were just talking, it's, it is not all about price. It's about what you're getting for your money and overall value. There's an old saying says the cheap will be expensive. Um, always remember that. So it's not always about price. Um, also remember too, I'm adding something real quick here. You can't get, um, in a lot of those places, you can't get warranties. Um, dealerships have the ability to offer you warranties. Um, and, and when they offer you a warranty, it's going to be a good warranty and, uh, offers even more peace of mind that you're buying the right car from the right place. So, um, and number seven is that extended test drive and the horror stories that come with that extended test drive. So, um, you, and keep in mind too, actually, there are some dealerships They'll let you take the car overnight. And you know, I know our dealership will do that with our manager's approval. Let's take the car overnight and put it in your life like that. You don't have to finish all that paperwork and do all that stuff and and, and risk everything that they're gonna make you risk um, to be able to make sure it's the right car. But like I said, within the first few minutes, you're gonna sit in the car, you're gonna put your hands on the steering wheel, you're gonna know if it's the right car for you or not. So definitely, I'm trying to uh, help us all out here and, and understand that buying a car online is probably going to be one of those stories that you tell people, uh, remember when I did. Um, it's not usually gonna end up in a good experience from what I've heard, looking online, reviews, stuff like that. 